Hello, today I'm going to be walking you through the step-by-step -step process and how financials are consolidated from the raw source data to the income statement that you may see in a financial report. Now, every company is going to be doing this differently, but I hope to show you one of the more efficient and flexible ways to tackle this. This video is also going to introduce you to one of the most core concepts of FPNA, which is building an index table, which we'll cover shortly. So first, let's go over our objective. We want to consolidate the financial information presented in the source data into the format presented within the consolidated tab. This is to make sure that information is easily understood by stakeholders and investors so that they can understand the financial position of the company. If we just consolidated using a format like this that just categorizes each GL account, this will be very hard for investors to really understand what's going on with the company as there will just be way too much information. And having a summarized consolidated statement is a very effective tool in signaling to your investors how the company is currently doing. Now for our purpose, we want to consolidate information for the fiscal year 2023 as it indicates for the year ended December 31st, 2023. Luckily, the source data that we're working with is all for the posting period of 2023, so we don't really have to do any data manipulations. And the fields that we will be working with includes the posting period, transaction number, the division, vendor, the account, and lastly, the debit and credit entries. So I'm just going to hide these three columns first as we will not be using them. And I'm also going to include a column called gross impact. And the gross impact will capture the financial impact of each transaction to the net income. And you'll notice that in all of my videos, I always go through this exercise because it is very common for companies to have this format of their financials. And the way we're going to do this is we have to identify exactly which accounts are revenues and which accounts are expenses. And if they're a revenue item, you want to calculate using credit minus debit as a credit balance for a revenue account indicates an inflow. And if it's a debit account, inflow. And if it's an expense account, you want to calculate the gross impact using debit minus credit. So if we take a look at our financial statement, we can see that all our revenue items actually start with the number four and all our expense items start with the number five. So we can use this criteria to identify which are revenue and which are expenses. So to assess the gross impact, I'm going to use the if function. And if the left first character of the account number equals four, I'm going to calculate credit minus debit, otherwise debit minus credit. And this will get you the gross impact. It's very simple, but it's very important that you know how to do this and how to properly identify which accounts are revenue and which accounts are expense. So now let's actually figure out how to roll up these accounts into these categories presented here. And if we take a look at the index tab, we can see we were provided roll up information. It indicates that the service and consulting, which includes service and consulting revenue, is categorized in one section whereas all the other categories roll up to their respective sections. Now, people would normally think that it's better to roll up into their parent account first and then roll up the totals into the summarized statement here. However, that method is not that flexible as there are cases where a specific account might roll up into a different category compared to their parent account. So we're going to map each of these GL accounts into the sections presented here. Now you might be worried because some companies have over hundreds of accounts and to map each account to a specific section will take hours of time. However, there is a way to tackle this. If the company is very well structured, you'll notice that each account has an indication of where it rolls up into. So if we take a look at the financial statement tab here, we can first identify that all the revenue jail accounts start with the four and all the expense jail accounts start with the five. And then you'll also notice that the third digit, so if I zoom in here a little bit, the third digit always increases by one based on their category. And then within their category, the last digit will also increase by one based on whether it's a different account. So we can see that the service revenue is 401, sales revenue is 402, consulting is 403, 
And also for our expense accounts, it's 501 for compensation. Marketing is 504, license is 502, professional fees is 503, and then so on. So we're going to use this number convention to efficiently roll up the accounts into a specific category first, and then make manual changes based on how management and executives want to see their financials. So within the index tab, I'm going to first identify which account codes roll up into which parent GL first. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to X look up the parent GL from the financial statements and get our parent GL first. Now what we can do here is we can see that the account number that rolls up into each parent GL is one row below the parent GL name. So we can use the offset function here. So offset and return one row after within the same column by indicating a zero. And then when I close this, it will always return one row after the parent GL name that was identified in the XLOOKUP function. And lastly, because we understand that the first three digit code indicates where the account rolls up into, we can use the left and then the three to return the first three characters of each account code. And then I'm going to copy this and then paste values. And I'm going to add one more section here called consolidated category. And here I want to just quickly map exactly which parent GL rose up into which consolidated category. So I'm just going to copy these sections first and copy this here. And I can see that salaries, compensation will roll up into salaries, marketing will roll up into marketing, license, and all these other categories are already mapped accordingly. Subscription needs to go here. Sale of goods needs to go here. And then service and consulting, we know that service and consulting will roll up into the same section. And now we can begin building our index table. I'm going to first set up a field called GL account and then consolidated roll up. Now I want to bring in all the unique GL accounts here first. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the unique function and then bring in all the GL accounts over there. And we, I can see that we have a lot. And I'm also going to sort the GL accounts into an ascending order so that it is more organized. And as I've mentioned, we already set up our account code here to see exactly where it rolls up into the consolidated category. So within the consolidated rollup section, all we have to do is X look up the first three values of the GL account number from this account code section here and then from the consolidated category. So now we have our roll up and then I'm just going to overwrite the formula with values and convert this into a table. It says spill. I'm just going to I should revert that and then I'm going to copy this as values as well. And then let's convert this into a table. And I'm going to call this table console rollup or console index. And it's also best practice to have a specific name for all your tables so that within your formulas, you can have full assurance that you're referencing the right data. And now that we have an index table, we can use this information to map each of these accounts to a specific section. So I'm going to call this console rollup. And then X look up the account number from the index table into the specific rollup section. And now we have our console rollup. And lastly, we're just going to sum ifs the gross impact figure based on the console rollup. And you have your financials. 
and make sure that your formulas are always referencing the entire range. And now we have a very summarized view of exactly how Shin Financials is doing. We can see that all our revenues or the main categories are from service related revenues, whereas our main expenses are obviously compensation. And because we're a service based company, we have a lot of consulting fees and we're also overspending in general and administrative fees, which is something that we should look into as this expense should not be that high in nature. And that's it. That's how you consolidate financials into broader categories so that the information is more easily understood. Again, I want to mention that a lot of companies will do this differently. However, I find this method to be the most flexible as it allows you to change certain GL accounts into specific categories as needed. For example, let's say that we have consulting fee here and their internal contractors, but management wants to see them within the salary section as he views them as internal headcount resources. So instead of professional fees here, we can change this to salaries and wages. And then within our section, you'll see that our professional fees dropped pretty significantly and we're still spending a lot on human resources. And again, just having the flexibility to really change the view as needed is a very, very powerful tool. Overall, I hope this video helped you gain insight in how to consolidate information and will be a good reference for you to think of a method of your own. This file will be available for download within the download link below. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me in my email. I'm going to be constantly uploading more educational content. So if you found this video helpful, follow for more.